Uh, and, we're, and we're back. Welcome to the podcast that still has no name. This is Mike. I'm here with a special guest, Jay. Hey, guys. What's going on? Uh, those of you who knew me from back in the day, um, Jay needs no introduction. For those of you who are new, we're going to talk about, uh, really, actually, it's a full guidebook. Don't let the title fool you. The book is the Testosterone Optimization Therapy Bible, and it is like a 500 and 50 page book loaded with references but it talks more about uh lifestyle dieting and everything and jay you know jay's closing it on 50 and he looks better than you know most people in their 20s so let's just have an open free willing discussion on lifestyle optimization health optimization a trt what is trt why do people go on trt and take it from here awesome well, Mike, first off, between me and you, it's fucking amazing that you and I are back together again. It's been too long. Um, that book was written and released in February of this year. It's kind of like a overarching expose from my first book, which you helped me with uh, back in 2015, which was the original TRT manual, which is still the number one rated um, book in the, on Amazon for that you know uh, topic or niche, which is testosterone, at that time, replacement therapy, which we've now change the acronym because replacement's kind of stupid in the world that we live in right now where our hormones are being bombarded from so many angles. So we change it to optimization because physicians want, you know, men and women who come in as patients to become optimized, not to replace a declining amount. So that's kind of where it was. That book was released this year in February. As you said, it's a monster. That's why we call it the Bible. It's close to 600 pages. It has over 600 um, scientific references and again, it's a beast. It took me a full year. I had some awesome people help me edit it. Um, I have five, you know, amazing doctors and one of the world's leading compound pharmacy uh, or pharmacists also on my science team. So I stand the book up against pretty much anything on the marketplace or in the marketplace when it comes to optimization. And I do think, as you said, it, you know, it's much more than just somebody who wants to get hormonally optimized. It also provides angles on lifestyle from a standpoint of training. Um, the right way to eat, the right, um, you know, both supplements and gray market supplements to use in addition to um, complement and optimize lifestyle. And then we also have a chapter in there um, on spiritual fitness, which, you know, is kind of like a side sh sh uh, sh um, offshoot of your book, Gorilla Mindset, in uh, doing the mindfulness stuff, you know, because as you and I both know that living in today's society, as crazy as it is, you really need to learn how to silence your mind. Yeah, and that's, again, why we're going to have a free-ranging conversation because people who are, I don't know, people are sick and don't realize it, and here's what I mean by that. I know what it's like to be fully dialed in, diet dialed in, supplement styled, everything dialed in, and I know what the absence of that is like. So I'm like, I know, like, oh, God, I'm a little achy. I feel a little off my game. But most people have never actually been dialed in and they don't realize that so much of being optimized is you just don't feel what other people feel and take for granted. You just don't feel sick. You just don't feel weak. You just don't feel groggy or tired or have brain fog. But you have to dial you have to dial it in. But but what would be before dialing it in? What would be, you know, the 80-20, the basics, the real thing that, you know, a, a man who's 25, a woman who's 50, a lot of, because the, the principles are fundamentally the same until you start talking about, you know, talking to a doctor about some issues. So how, how can people just start to, to dial in on their life? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, it really just depends on like what, you know, age you find yourself. If you're listening to this podcast, you know, if you're a 20 year old guy, 25 year old guy, 30 year old guy, you absolutely positively have to get your blood work done. You know, Mike has talked about that, you know, five or six years ago, as have I, we've done, you know, podcasts a long time ago on it. It's very simple living in any first world country today to go to a private, you know, medical labs, uh, you know, I'll name a couple. And again, Mike and I do not make any money by recommending these companies, but private MD labs or discounted labs.com, which is owned by a close personal friend of mine. All of these companies literally will allow you to go online and you pick a different lab, you pay and they send you a requisite in an email, you print it out, you take it to this blood bank. You do not need a doctor's prescription, okay? So many people get confused and think, oh, well, I gotta go through my doctor and my benefits and all that. No, you don't. A simple blood testosterone and estradiol, which is estrogen men test, is less than $80, 
okay, with a coupon and they run those things all the time, you can get it for like $60, $55. So there's no earthly reason that any man or woman for that matter um, should ever not be doing internal diagnostics of their blood work because it's really the only way you can understand, you know, how to get or find out if you are suffering from some sort of a deficiency um, hormonally. But that's, to me, that's where you have to start first because if you don't really understand this, this, the problem, there's no way you can come up with a solution. That's going to go way over the heads of most people though. So let's stick to the book because I know what you're talking about with b blood work and reading your blood work. And I actually do my own blood work and I've done my own blood work for years. And I, that's why I always laugh when people would um, say to me, you know, they would accuse me of all kinds of things and say that I'm unhealthy. I'm like, well, I know what my cholesterol level is. Do you, you know, do you know what your, yours is? But what, what specifically let's talk about, let me, let's pitch your book, dude. Like sure. I, I've sold, you know, a few copies of this here and there and people, people need to know this kind of information what what is in there specifically what are people going to learn people don't read 500 page books anymore See, <laughs> i think i even told you when you're doing your book do a 200 page book and if people like it do another book and then you, you actually make twice as much money because people don't aren't maybe they will because it really is a bible and like a reference book but what are some things that people can take away from this book well i mean you know the, the so the first book obviously was that the first book was 170 pages that book was, you know, kind of my masterpiece, so to speak, you know, everything I know and collated together. Uh, but for, but for, for that book, for sure, um, it's definitely going to teach anyone, um, you know, how to live a fully optimized life. I mean, that's, you know, the secondary or the subtitle of the book. Um, and again, from everything, from just eating, from learning how to exercise correctly, why it's important that you do a combination of strength and resistance training along with cardiovascular training. Um, you know, what supplements to take, um, how, in, you know, how to, you know, put these all into a lifestyle that is, you know, composite with or, or commensurate with the life that you live, you know, so depending on how stressful your job is, you know, how big your family is, how many kids you have, you know, all that stuff is discussed in the book so that you can do it. And it is a realistic possibility. I think a lot of people, you know, Mike, who see me, you know, in public and my public persona, um, I am incredibly fit for someone my age. So a lot of people sometimes get intimidated and they think, oh, well, you know, he's just an aberrant person. There's no way that I can look like that, blah, blah, blah. And it's, you know, the book totally dispels that myth because as you know, anyone can get into shape. It really just takes, you know, c concerted effort, consistency of showing up and the right strategy. And I can assure you that the right strategy is in that book. Yeah, people, it's, it's, I don't know. I guess the word right, the right word is frustrating. And here's what I mean by that. I've been in the, even when I did politics, I still had a lifestyle readership and the quality of questions over the past 10 years has declined. And that seems kind of judgmental and mean, but that's not how I mean it. I just mean the, what would be considered basic knowledge, even five or 10 years ago, people don't even know how to ask the basic questions. We're like a remedial. I remember before people would, you know, go to college or whatever, you have to take your tests. And if you pass, if you do well on the test, you the placement, you're at the 101 or the 110. And then some people have to do remedial. The basic lack of, the lack of knowledge is so startling that almost everyone is remedial. So what would be remedial advice that people should follow? For example, most people don't even know what intermittent fasting is. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I mean, we could go all day on that. That's a whole other show, possibly, you know, the lowering of the standard mean deviation of, I think, people's intelligence quotients. And, and you know, that is obviously because of technology. I have my own opinions on that. But just, you know, very, very basic talking about what can people do, like actionable advice, like right now at when you know nothing, you know, you've learned nothing from high school, you've learned nothing in your college, you know, about nutrition or health or any of this stuff. You know, the, first, the most important thing I think you can do is just understand like what macro and micronutrients are. And again, what is a carbohydrate? What is a protein? What is a fat? So, you know, those three things without going into a long esoteric discussion are simple to understand. Just go on internet and Google it, read about it. There's an amazing book that you can read called Deep Nutrition that really breaks it down in a very lay perspective and lay way. Um, I've also written a book on intermittent fasting called The Metabolic Blowtorch Diet, um, which I'll be happy to send to anyone as a PDF. All you do is just got to email or, you know, however you're going to connect through me and Mike on this podcast, I'll send it to you. But it's also, you know, a 160 page book and it teaches people how to intermittent fast. And what intermittent fasting is very simply is, 
not eating, you know, for a specified amount of time, you know, between 14, 16, 18, 20 hours, and then eating in a narrow window or, you know, what you would call a feeding window after, you know, that day. And all, all fasting is relative to your goal, right? So it's all context specific. So if you're a fat person and you have a lot of body fat to lose for whatever reason, then you're going to want to fast longer and you're going to want to make sure that the nutrition that you do eat in your feeding windows when you fast is going to be the kind that's going to give you, you know, energy dense, nutritious food, the right type of protein, the right essential fatty acids. So, you know, I think it's just, I think the, probably the easiest way to summarize like where you should be if you're really, you know, not, no, you don't have a lot of information about basic human nutrition is just understanding what a, ca- a fat, cal- you know, fat and a carbohydrate and a protein calorie is. And then from understanding that, you know, learning what you need to do based on your unique, you know, um, specificity. So if you're a fat person and you know you need to lose body fat, then you obviously are going to have to lower, reduce your carbohydrate intake, you know, increase your protein intake and, you know, make sure you get enough healthy fats in your diet. You know, that's the kind of simple stuff. Um, Even it might not sound simple to you if you're someone who finds themselves in a really bad situation health wise, but um Again, it's kind of step by step. You really have to invest the time into learning that kind of basic stuff. So what would be a, a, a good sort of day in the life? That's how I always like to think about this. And that's why there was a section in Gorilla Mindset about sort of the perfect the day. What would be the day in the life you're taking somebody, they're willing to listen? Because that's what I always think of in terms of who I want around is they're willing to listen and execute they're not going to waste my time with pointlessness if you were talking to say person said they they really want to improve their physical health and physical life what's the day in the life look like you wake up and then what that's a great question um it really just is going to depend on like what you want to do from a nutrition standpoint obviously i recommend fasting um you know alexander Warren and Antonio cortez just ironically yesterday it might have been this morning i don't know put a really awesome uh tweet on twitter and he said the two best t- tips that anyone could ever take on um uh, losing body fat are not eating and extending the length of your uh, fast window so in my opinion today the fastest way to lose body fat to become healthy quote unquote is to learn how to fast so if in, in a day in the life of someone like me um, I literally fast every other day. So my whole methodology in my book that I wrote is based on one day you train and the next day you fast. So if you're fasting, you're going to not eat. You're going to wake up in the morning and you're not going to eat any food for at least 16 to 18 to 20 hours, depending on how long and how, you know, how, what your fat loss goal is. If you, the more fat loss that you have, you know, the bigger the fat loss goal, the more time you're going to need to be fasting. I mean, it's just that simple. Um, if you're someone who doesn't need to lose that much weight, but you want to maintain your current condition, then you don't have to fast as longer. So your window of fasting is going to be less, maybe 15, 16, 17 hours, or maybe even 14 hours. So it just is going to depend on what your goal is, but you know, that would be my fasting day. Like the next day I train with weights and you know, I usually train in my life right now. I usually train three days a week. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I train with my wife and I train with a couple other people that work in my uh, businesses. Um, and we train in the morning. So that means that, like if I fasted the day before, I wake up at 6 a.m., I have a nice bowl of oatmeal. Um, and then, you know, I do whatever I got to do. I get my kids off to school and then we're in the gym. And then usually before before I train, I might have like a pre-workout, um, you know, tea or a coffee or something like that. And then immediately post-workout, I have a shake. I have a, you know, protein meal replacement shake, whatever it is, doesn't matter. And then throughout that day, I eat, you know, relatively, you know, I wouldn't say unrestrained, but I mean clean, but I eat, you know, as often as I'm hungry. So one day I fast, the next day I eat. And again, I'm training with weights the day that I am um, eating. And that way or that lifestyle allows me to maintain the physical condition that I want, which is, you know, pretty, pretty low body fat year round. So what, what's that look like for them though? What's that look like for a, a person new to all this world? So a person that's new to this, that means that you're going to have to learn from a fasting perspective. You know, um, you're going to have to learn uh, calorie control. You're going to have to learn, um, you know, stamina. You're going to have to have, uh, you know, very good impulse control, not go and, and just decide that you want to eat because your stomach is hungry. I mean, you know, it takes to fast initially, especially when one is not fast adapted. Um, It takes, you know, anywhere from five to seven, some people it takes as long as eight to 10 days for your body to get used to not eating in regular intervals. So for someone who's never fasted before, I always say, you know, start low and go slow. So that would probably mean you eat 
you, you know, you, you, your last meal, let's say you're starting fasting, your last meal is at say seven o'clock at night. So then that means the next day you would not eat again until noon. And that would give you between 14, 13 to 15 hours of not eating. So when you are sleeping at night, um, the hours that you sleep do count as being fasted. So it's actually relatively easy for anyone to start an intermittent fasting program. Um, and then as, as, as you evolve and your body gets used to, you know, not eating and going long intervals of say 13, 14, 15 hours, you can actually extend that length of the non eating window. So for example, my book, you know, I have a lot of science behind it, but we recommend going somewhere between 18 and 22 hours of fasting on your fasted day. And we found from the science that the longer you can extend your fast, the more you allow the biochemical cascade that happens in the body when you're fasting to go after the fat stores on your body that are very resistant to be, to falling off. So for example, for dudes, that would be like your stomach, that would be your love handles, that'd be your lower back. And for women, that would be like in your lower hips, your buttocks, in those regions, your, your uh, what is called your glute ham tie-in, so your hamstrings hit your, your butt. Um, so those, those are the areas where you're going to lose the fat, the fastest, or excuse me, the, the most efficiently when you can extend your fast. And, you know, you're going to find that most people struggle to lose fat in the resistant areas. And that's why um, fasting is such a great uh, lifestyle slash diet to adhere to because it will help with resistant fat loss. So intermittent fasting would be one, a shrink training would be um also good. I, I think the best book that I've ever, I always recommend this to everyone. I don't know if you know a better one. I think Get Serious by Brett Osborne is book. if you're just um, a person just starting off, uh, nobody's written yet. Maybe you will write it. There, there, Nobody's written the from couch potato to 5K for bros right. or for women who want to get like, you know, muscular or whatever. I I've, haven't seen that book yet. I think it would actually be one of the greatest books, probably some millions of copies, which is <laughs> Because the concept is from from couch potato to five k, which is cool. But what about from you know video game Mountain Dew drinker to like yoked bro? You know, have have the time of his life. I think that'd be a good book. I, I agree. So so ours. Where where could somebody go to other than that book? Get serious for a step by step guide to changing and improving their physical health. I mean, it's tough. I mean, you know, I mean. I don't do any coaching or anything like that. I am I am going to have a group um, that's staffed by top, some of the top optimization physicians in the world. Um, I agree with Mike. You know, Dr. Brad Osborne is a ex business partner of mine. You know, we're still friends. I have nothing bad to say about him. He's a brilliant doctor, no doubt about it. It is a great book. It's very basic. You know, Mike brings up a really really good point. Um, there's a lot of people today in absolutely horrific and poor health. They do not take care of themselves physically. Obesity is at, an, is at an all-time high. I saw a statistic the other day that, you know, essentially 40% of every person in America is obese. Um, and then the worst statistic is I think it's over 68% or 66% of adults are obese. Um, so, you know, this is a significant health problem that we, we find ourselves in today's day and age. Clearly, the medical system, which I call the sick care system, has failed. It does not work to improve people's health. All it does is obviously treat people's symptoms with polypharmacy and other drugs, which is, again, another whole podcast that we could probably get into. Um, you know, it's tough for me to make a recommendation. I think you just have to educate yourself. You really do have to go online. You have to talk, reach out to people like Mike and I and ask us, you know, like, what's the best place to go? Because there's a lot of, you know, fraudsters. There's a lot of people that have Instagram accounts who, you know, have good bodies and, you know, naturally have six packs and stuff like that who claim that they're experts on this and they're really not, you know, so it's, it's actually difficult in my opinion to decode, um, you know, truth from fiction today, especially on the internet, but there are great books. You know, I already mentioned deep nutrition. You can definitely follow, you know, Alexander Juan Antonio Cortez on Twitter and also get on his, his email list. You should obviously get on my email list. Um, because we drop, you know, really, really good intensive information and we do do a good job of explaining it in very lay fashion for people so that they can understand, you know, from soup to nuts. Yeah, that's, you, br you bring up a great point and actually it's, it's one reason why there are certain subjects I haven't talked about for a while because I lost the patience to deal with uh, a, su a segment of the audience, which is a, it's a weird audience if you think about, and I'm not quite sure what inspires people to be this way, but the, I, I would say, oh, yeah, that fitness guy, he's on gear, trend, masteron, probably taking T3 and T4. He looks great, but he's not natty. And then they would, would like, argue with me. Right. I'm like, first of all, you don't know anything. 
you're a, you're not like you've never lived the life. You don't know what it looks like. But I'm like, now you want to argue with me. And is it that way too, even with the internet marketing stuff, they'll say, oh, this guy's a Lamborghini. I'm like, no, no, no. Like anybody can go to a Lamborghini car show, take a bunch of selfies. He is like, I know what people are doing. And then like, they want to argue with me. And then it almost becomes like, I don't even want to do the podcast anymore because of the idiots who argue with me about things that they don't know. And by the way, it's largely a male trait. Um, that's the, the weird thing is there's nobody who knows more about life than a 25 year old man or younger. I, he knows everything about everything. And then when you try to inform people and say, Hey, you know, there was meal plans by those Instagram guys. I know how they actually eat. They're eating cake and cheesecake and then they're shooting up insulin afterwards. And then they're taking a little bit of extra trend and, and that's what they're actually eating. They're not eating the chicken and sweet potatoes all the time. But then like people want to argue with me. I'm like, Oh, right. It, it becomes a, a, a cycle. And I think that's why, Get Serious by Dr. Brett Osborne is good. Um, Alexander is great. He's got a great account. I've actually done seminars with him. And your stuff is great too because it's realistic. You're you're not going to uh, start intermittent fasting right away. You can't do a 24-hour fast. You'd faint. In fact, you know, disclaimer, see a doctor before you engage in any exercise, blah, blah, blah. But you can start with a 13-hour, 14-hour, 15-hour. I do intermittent fasting just because I'm, I'm eating slows down my brain function. I'm more productive until I've eaten, and that's why I do it. But you, you do have to start with those basic rudimentary uh, principles, intermittent fasting, strength training, cardio. And then, of course, you can get, you know, fully, if you want to know the full the full thing, 550 pages. I mean, I guess the way I look at it, nobody's going to read the whole book, but, you know, you can pick a, pick a chapter off it and kind of like, how long did this thing take you to write by the way? Jeez. It, it, it's uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a masterful work. And um, you know, I did have help. It's very, very, it's very, very easy to understand. Mike's right. Um, it has 22 chapters in it. There is actually a chapter in there by my wife and Dr. Jim Meehan, which is written strictly for women is actually the biggest chapter in the book. Um, it's how to do uh, female hormone optimization. And then all the other things that my wife is really, really genius on, which is empowerment for females and stuff. But you can, anybody can buy that book um, and just read a couple of chapters that apply to their life. You know, if you're a 50 year old man and you have low testosterone or what is known in medical terms as testosterone deficiency, it's very simple to figure out how to optimize yourself hormonally through, through using therapeutic testosterone. If you're a gym bro and you want to read this chapter called agents of change, there's every single supplement and gray market medication, including peptides, including growth hormone, including, um, you know, all different types of ergogen like thyroid hormone and all kinds of stuff, albuterol, fat loss agents. There's everything broken down, totally decoded, how to use it, um, what dosage Under a doctor's supervision, by the way, we don't endorse <laughs> yes. anything, all of this under a doctor's supervision. Yes, absolutely. Everything is in there, you know, written from a medical usage standpoint, from a therapeutic level, but it's all broken down um, and supported by science and research and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I... You know, just to go back to a little bit of a couple of things you were saying too, is like, it's really sad today in today's day and age. There's a lot of people, um, unfortunately who claim themselves to be experts. Um, and they really don't have any experience. They don't have time in the game. Um, you know, it takes a long time of work and study and obviously, you know, rigorous application to really truly consider yourself a master. And I just, it's just, a, it's a shame in my opinion that there's so many people online who are essentially ruthless with their information and their lies and their deception. And you just, you really have to do a good job of finding out like who is real and who isn't. And, you know, I'll just, you know, shameless plug, uh, my, you know, my website, which is T O T, which stands for testosterone optimization therapy revolution, um, is loaded with research articles. As Mike said, you know, very, very scientifically backed, um, and real world application on everything, you know, not just hormonal optimization, but again, supplements, um, you know, uh, training. I mean, everything is on that site. I have really awesome writers that help me with the site and that's a great site to get information. And then, you know, I do a lot of podcasts too with some of the top physicians in the world. Um, I actually have a, t uh, a doctor's round table every Wednesday at 4 PM on YouTube. We get a couple hundred people watching live. The doctors are the best doctors in the world. They answer your questions. They're there on their own time. They're not getting paid. Um, and it's a great place to go and learn and ask questions of physicians. Okay, and you can, by the way, the book is the Testosterone Optimization Therapy Bible, quite a title, and that is on Amazon.com. You can buy it there, and they can also go to your website at trtrevolution.com. Thanks so much, Jay. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Uh -huh.